All right, today we're going to start on chapter 29, uh, steering suspension systems. Uh, intro, suspension systems follow the road surface in order to maintain traction control vehicle and provide passengers smooth ride. <coughs> The purpose of the complete suspension system is to isolate the vehicle body from road shocks and vibrations which would otherwise be transferred to the passengers and load. It must also keep the tires in contact with the road, regardless of road surface. A basic suspension system consists of springs, axles, shock absorbers, arms, rods, and ball joints. The spring is the flexible component of the suspension. Basic types are leaf springs, coil springs, and torsion bars. Modern passenger vehicles usually use light coil springs. Light commercial vehicles have heavier springs than passenger vehicles and can have coil springs at the front and leaf springs at the rear. Heavy commercial vehicles usually use leaf springs or air suspension. Solid or beam axles connect the wheels on each side of the vehicle. This means the movement of a wheel on one side of the vehicle is transferred to the wheel on the other side. With independent suspension, the wheels can move independently of each other, which reduces body movement. This prevents the other wheel from being affected by movement of the wheel on the opposite side, and this reduces body movement. When a wheel strikes a bump, there is a reaction force, and energy is transferred to the spring, which makes it oscillate. Oscillations left uncontrolled can cause loss of traction between the wheel and the road surface. Shock absorbers dampen spring oscillations by forcing oil through small holes. The oil heats up as it absorbs the energy of the motion. This heat is then transferred through the body of the shock absorber to the air. When a vehicle hits an obstruction, the size of the reaction force depends on how much unsprung mass is at each wheel assembly. Sprung mass refers to those parts of the vehicle supported on the springs. This includes the body, the frame, the engine, and associated parts. Unsprung mass includes the wheels, tires, brake assemblies, and suspension parts not supported by the springs. Vehicle ride and handling is improved by keeping unsprung mass as low as possible. Wheel and brake units that are small and light follow the road contours without a large effect on the rest of the vehicle. I don't know why my mouse is not working. The network of springs, arm struts, and shocks work together, and they need to be aligned correctly. Suspension systems isolate, isolate the vo vehicle body from road shocks and vibrations and keeps tires in contact with the road. Uh, they must withstand loads imposed by vehicle's mass when cornering, accelerating, braking, and, even un and uneven roads. The reaction force when tire hits an obstruction. Suspension system must tolerate a huge amount of force, cornering, accelerating, breaking potholes, and speed bumps. Uh, springs are between the frame and axle and shaped to suit specific applications. We have leaf springs, coil springs, and torsion bars. Rubber is commonly used to limit the extreme suspension movements. Parts of vehicles supported by suspension systems are insulated from road shocks and vibrations. Parts that are not supported by suspension systems determine the unsprung weight, which are usually wheels, tires, brakes, axles, and steering sus and suspension parts. The unsprung weight exerts momentum to vehicle body when unsprung weight is moved. The heavier the unsprung weight, the greater the upward force will generate. Preventing or reducing oscillation is known as dampening. When a vehicle is in motion, forces exert pressure against the wheel units. 
Yaw is the movement around the z-axis. Pitch is the movement around the y-axis. And roll is the movement along the x-axis. The suspension system isolates the body from road shocks and vibrations, which would otherwise be transferred to the passengers and load. It also must keep the tires in contact with the road. When a tire hits an obstruction, there is a reaction force. The size of this reaction force depends on the unsprung mass at each wheel assembly. The sprung mass is that part of the vehicle supported by the springs, such as the body, the frame, the engine, and associated parts. Unsprung mass includes the components that follow the road contours, such as the wheels, tires, brake assemblies, and any part of the steering and suspension not supported by the springs. Vehicle ride and handling can be improved by keeping unsprung mass as low as possible. When large and heavy wheel assemblies encounter a bump or pothole, they experience a larger reaction force, sometimes large enough to make the tire lose contact with the road surface. Wheel and brake units that are small and light follow road contours without a large effect on the rest of the vehicle. At the same time, a suspension system must be strong enough to withstand loads imposed by vehicle mass during cornering, accelerating, braking, and uneven road surfaces. Types of body constructions. You have unibody construction uses body sheet metal to give structure support and rigidity and is the most common chassis. The unibody construction has ability to build around, uh, build couple zones into the structure. In the full frame construction, frame and body are separately, separate, uh, separately constructed pieces. They, type, they have a ladder type frame, which uh, usually are in trucks and heavy duty vehicles. Um, you guys, that trainer right there, the 05 Ford Explorer, that is a full frame construction. Most trucks, large SUVs are full frame. Oh, lots of videos. Applying a force to this object deforms it. Removing the force lets it return to its original shape. This characteristic is called elasticity. Automotive suspension systems generally use the elastic properties of metals to provide the springing medium. The springs are located between the frame and the axle assemblies and are shaped to suit the application. Leaf springs are normally semi-elliptical and they absorb the applied force by flattening out under the load. Coil springs are formed in a spiral from a single steel rod and absorb the force of impact by twisting. Torsion bars are held rigid at one end and twist around their center as the suspension arm is deflected. They all return to their original shape when the deflecting force is removed. Non-metallic materials like rubber can provide the main springing action but are more commonly used as stops to limit extreme suspension movement. The stops can also be shaped to provide an auxiliary springing function. In light vehicle applications, air is normally used only for right height control. When a vehicle strikes an uneven surface, the springs are deformed from their original shape. They return to their original position, but tend to overshoot and set up oscillations. This makes the vehicle bounce up and down which makes the ride uncomfortable. It can produce forces that make the tires bounce, and a bouncing tire won't grip the road surface as well. Shock absorbers have a marked effect on how well tires follow a road surface. They dampen the natural bounce over the road and reduce spring oscillations. There are different kinds of shock absorbers, but they all use a piston sliding in a cylinder filled with oil. The dampening action occurs as a result of the piston movement, forcing the oil through valves in the piston and at the foot of the shock absorber, which restrict oil flow. The oil heats up from this continuous movement as energy of motion of the suspension is transformed into heat. 
This heat is transferred through the body of the shock absorber to the outside air. Most of a vehicle's weight is supported by its suspension system. It suspends the body and associated parts so that they are insulated from road shocks and vibrations that would otherwise be transmitted to the passengers and the vehicle itself. However, other parts of a vehicle are not supported by the suspension system, such as the wheels, tires, brakes, steering, and suspension parts not supported by springs. These parts are called unsprung weight. Generally, unsprung weight should be kept as low as possible. Different materials have different levels of elasticity. Up to a certain point, they can be deformed and released, and they will try to return to their original condition. Beyond that point, they stay deformed. With some materials, if it returns to the original state too quickly, it can produce a bouncing effect called an oscillation. Preventing or reducing this oscillation is called dampening. It can occur in many different ways. The dampening material absorbs the energy from the oscillation. In vehicle suspension, a shock absorber reduces oscillation in the spring. When a vehicle is in motion, several forces operate to displace the wheel units. Driving thrust, braking torque, and cornering force. It's a naked These forces must be transferred to the frame of the vehicle, but while they act, the wheel units must stay aligned with each other and with the frame. They must be fastened longitudinally and laterally while still having the freedom to move vertically and allow for suspension travel. On vehicles with non-independent suspension, leaf springs provide a simple means of performing these functions. On a rear-wheel drive vehicle, the axle housing is fastened to the spring by the spring center bolt and clamped to the spring by U-bolts. Since the front of the eye of the main leaf is located on the frame at the fixed shackle point, the spring